Welcome to Brunswick Biz on ATMC TV Channel 3. I'm your host, Kat Newton. On this month's episode, we visit with Holden Brothers Farm Market, Sunset Slush, Bubbles and Bows Pet Salon, and Petroni's Pizza. Follow us as we connect Brunswick County one business at a time. I'm here with Kelly Holden of Holden Brothers Farm Market right here in Shalote, and I was so excited to come here today. My family has been coming here for years, so I was excited to talk to you and find out what it is that you do every day. So thanks for letting us come out. Well, we're happy to have you every day. Oh, well, thank you. So now I know this has been around for years, so we'd love to find out a little bit of the history about the farm and what, what you do every day. Okay. Well, historically, this farm came into our family in 1756, and in 1989, we were honored as being one of the bicentennial farms in the state of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the ninth oldest farm in direct family lineage within the state of North Carolina. Oh, wow. So we're, we're quite proud of our heritage here at right. Holden Brothers. But the business itself was started in 1984. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a little open-air market down at the intersection of Ocean Isle Beach Road and 17. And at that time, I started the business and saw that I couldn't handle the production aspects, mm -hmm. growing the crops and taking care of them, and, uh, and then the marketing uh, aspects of the, crop, of, of the harvest. Yeah. So that's when I contacted my brother. He was working at the time with Federal Paper and asked him to come join me. And, mm -hmm. uh, We've been together since 1984. We moved to this location in 1991 when the highway widened. And uh, the uh, northbound lane is actually where the market used to be. Oh, wow. There. What a so. great story. So, so you've been around a lot. You've seen everything grow. Right. Now, what all do you offer here? I mean, there's tons of produce. Can you tell us a little bit about your produce? Yeah, beginning in the spring of the year, we, uh, we have a, a large selection of leafy grains. and. Uh, and strawberries. Strawberries are the big, uh, the big opener. Mm -hmm. That's what everybody looks forward to in the spring of the year. And uh, this year we've had an exceptional crop of strawberries. We started harvesting in March, mm -hmm. and believe it or not, we're still harvesting strawberries. Oh, wow. This is the latest that uh, that our season has ever has, has ever lasted. But we do pick your own on strawberries, mm -hmm. and that's one of only two crops that we allow pick your own on. Uh -huh. And uh, that's. Uh, like I said, that's the big drawing card right. in the spring. But uh, we also have uh, just a large variety uh, of, of other crops, uh, sweet corn, cantaloupes, watermelons, tomatoes, uh, you know, uh, Pretty much broccoli, everything. Yeah, yeah, cabbage, just a little bit of everything that's uh -huh. in season. The, but the one thing people don't realize is after the season passes with a lot of crops, uh -huh. uh, then you can't grow them in this area. It becomes too hot oh, in the okay. summer. So then we have to buy that, that commodity elsewhere. Right. So like lettuce, you can't grow lettuce or cabbage in the middle of the, in the heat of the summer. Right. Well, that's interesting. Now, can you tell us a little bit about which produce would be best in which seasons? Well, your leafy grains, strawberries, uh, uh, green onions, uh, crops like that, your, your uh, uh, cold crops, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, and all that, that's better in the early spring. Okay. Or, or uh, in the instance of, of the cold crops and the leafy grains, also in the late fall, we grow, grow two crops oh, of those, okay. so you can get those fresh twice, like two different seasons. Uh -huh. um, now the crops that are coming in, and this in, uh, in June, are cantaloupes, sweet corn, and uh, these are your traditional big, uh, big ticket items. Mm -hmm. Tomatoes, they'll be coming in some. And from midsummer right on into uh, to frost, we have these crops. Oh, wow. Because I, I plant on a uh, uh, continuing basis. I plant on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. what I call incremental planting. Mm -hmm. I plant a little bit of a whole lot. Oh, okay. And I, I don't make big acreage plantings, I make just small plantings. In the course of the season, I'll have over 100 acres of sweet corn, mm -hmm. but I plant it every week. 
Oh, okay. My, my first planting's um, in March. My last planting is to be in late August. Okay, and now for the winter, there, there's there's not going to be much going on. Is that right? Right, in the winter, we, we basically close in December uh -huh. after after our tomato season, and um, and then reopen again in March with with strawberries. It's what we traditionally do. Oh, okay. Now everything is grown right here on your farms, is that correct? That's correct. Wow, yeah. so there must be tons to do. Who all helps you out in getting, you know, all of your crops together? Okay, I have about 25 field workers okay. and uh, a lot of them are families that have been with me with me for since the market started. Mm -hmm. And uh, then in the store we have uh, I think about 11 store workers, mm -hmm. store employees that uh, that oversee and, uh, and and look out for this. Oh, okay, so, that's interesting. I, yeah, I do the most of the hands-on field work. You the, do? The wow. irrigation, the planting, the planting, and uh, oversee all the harvesting. And uh, but I've got some some great great workers. Here. Right. Well, that's great. Yeah. All yeah. right. Now you said that there is another. Another crop that can be picked besides strawberries. Okay, well that's What's tomatoes. The that's okay, tomatoes. tomatoes. And this People is something can... I started about about 15 years ago, experimenting with growing tomatoes in the off season, in the late season, in order to uh, try to keep the business going strong mm -hmm. uh, in October and November. And we've been very successful with that. Uh, I'll. Uh, plant tomatoes that will be harvested right on into the frost. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, the frost is what will end the tomato picking season. Oh, okay. I'm going to have to come do that. Yeah. That sounds fun. And in the spring of the year, we grow our crops on black plastic, mm -hmm. and that's to warm the soil up quickly so they produce quickly. Oh, wow. Now, the plantings we're doing now are all on white plastic. Oh, okay. And that's okay. to cool the soil down so that they don't it's get heat, so hot. the crops don't get too hot. That's interesting. I never even yeah. thought about that. Yeah. So what else do you have in here? I've seen um, some peaches that are in yeah, some... Yeah, we buy our peaches. We do not raise those ourselves. Okay. Uh, there's two types of peaches. There's your clean or your hard peaches that, that come off first, and then in, uh, in July your free stones will start coming off, mm -hmm. and they're the better peach. Okay. That you All see right. There. Well, that's great. So, can you tell us your hours, just in case our oh, viewers? Oh yeah, we're wanna... open from eight to seven, uh, from the strawberry season through Labor Day, and oh, then wow. after Labor Day, it's eight to six. Okay. And what's the phone number here in case someone wants to call? It's so, nine one zero five seven nine forty five hundred. Okay. And you're right off of Highway Seventeen, yeah. right before the Ocean Owl exit. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Well, thanks so much. We learned a lot, and we're excited to have our viewers come out here and try your crops. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're here at Sunset Slush at the main shop in Ocean Isle Beach. I'm here with Steve Saya. He runs his business with his wife, Catherine, and we are so delighted to be here. And I just tasted some of your Italian ice, and it was amazing. Well, thank you. We're thank so you. excited to be well, here. Now, before we get going with all of your stuff, can you tell us how you got started and what brought you to Brunswick County? Okay, well, years ago we had built a house down here in 99, and Catherine had moved up from the D.C. area to the Boston area. We sold that company up there, and I had mentioned to Catherine, let's go sell Italian ice down at Ocean Isle Beach. Uh -huh. be kind of different product because having come down here for several years and never seeing it, I thought there might be a, a demand for it or whatever. Right. And uh, we, Catherine, she tasted the ice. She thought it was fantastic. And the, the kid I grew up with is the manufacturer of the ice. So we spoke to him prior to coming down and we set up a whole little distribution center here and we uh, took it from there in 2003. And just to give you an idea of the growth mm -hmm. has what has happened. Uh, our first year in business, we sold maybe 90 two and a half gallon buckets of Italian oh ice. My goodness. And this year, uh, since March, through this store alone, has gone through, has gone through with our distribution channels and everything else, gone through almost 3,500 buckets of ice. So that that's that's a that's a significant growth. So y'all have grown to be mm -hmm. a lot bigger than you were now. Yes. <laughs> so we, we started on the old, the street corner of 904 and Old Georgetown wow. Road. And I think our average day was probably $29 or $30 a day. Oh, but we okay. stayed out there seven days a week and just tried mm -hmm. to introduce it to the locals and the people right. that were coming downtown. And then uh, our biggest break came from uh, uh, the commissions at Ocean Isle Beach. They, okay. they, they allowed us to vend on the beach as mm -hmm. a mobile vendor. And with that, it gave us almost national exposure with the product. 
really? Oh, and that's what has happened. Right. And it's become a, a fun part of the beach. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's a good hit. memory. Yeah, on the beach, it's fun. It's, now, it's laborious, but it's fun. <laughs> now, what beaches are you on? You're on Oceanal Beach. Like yeah, you said. yes. As, as far as the beaches that we vend on, we vend on Oceanal Beach, Oak Island, uh, Carolina Beach. And just two days ago, we found out that uh, we're going to be permitted to vend with six buggies up on Topsail Island. Oh, okay. And uh, these people are all independently owned and operated. Mm -hmm. Catherine and I do not own them. We just supply, right. they, they pay to use our name and they have to purchase our, our, our rice, obviously. Right, okay. So they're all independents. Yeah, now tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about your Italian ice. What flavors do you have? Oh, God. <laughs> I, we can go all the way from pumpkin spice Italian ice down to the very original lemon Italian ice, which is the traditional. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, when I was growing up, my friend's father, who started the company in 1956, and uh, I was a year old, so I guess everybody can figure out how old <laughs> I am now. Anyways, uh, he only made two flavors, blue vanilla and lemon. So to this day, I am telling you, I am still hooked on blue vanilla really? and lemon. I've uh -huh. been eating it for 55 years now, and I still love it. So. Uh -huh. But uh, we have, really, we go from the orange cream, the creamsicle flavor, which is like an old-fashioned dream school, to Mango, which is our number one seller. Okay. Uh, mango, mango is, and people actually get a little indignant on the beach when we don't have mango, so we make sure everybody on the beach has mango, mango. every day. Huh. Uh -huh. Now tell us a little bit, just so our viewers are clear, what is Italian ice? What is so special about it? Okay, it's, I mean, there's a lot of manufacturers for Italian ice, uh -huh. and it's, uh, our product has the consistency of a dairy but there's no cream of dairy in it. And okay. most people, when they try it, they think it's going to be crunchy and a rough texture and mm -hmm. kind of soupy. How it holds its texture, it, it, it's a process, it's a patented product, so I can't tell you how right. he does how it, the process, okay. and we know, but I, we, we vowed not to right. reveal it. Uh, so, but there's, but no there's, milk. there's no cream in it, no dairy in it, uh, no fat in it, no cholesterol, no gluten. Oh my so it's, it's actually a healthier dessert. A healthy it treat, is, yeah. it's a healthy dessert. And uh, for the lactose intolerant people, they, uh, they, they flock to our shops, so right. which is kind of neat. Well, you had mentioned something earlier. I kind of want to get into a little bit of how you run your business. You keep it very local here in Brunswick County. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Okay, I can give you a little example. The people at Oak Island, uh, they're, they're vacationed at Oak Island. They're from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, they've opened their, their shop. Uh, again, it's independently owned and operated. Uh, the people actually that have the Holden Beach store, their son had worked for us for the previous three years, Drew Sellers, D D Devin Sellers rather, and uh, his older brother Drew graduated UNCW. Oh, okay. And he wanted his younger brother convinced them to open a store. Uh -huh. So they set up in Holden Beach, so they own that, the Sellers, and uh, today, today's opening day wow. up at Wrightsville Beach for them, so they're into their second store now, uh -huh. and they're, they're growing it and they're having a fun time with it. Uh, it, we have, Catherine and I want to feel more part of the community and obviously I could have made some phone calls and had people come down from the north and say, uh -huh. look, we got this thing going, you want to get in business down here because some people have lost their jobs, I know, right. at home. Uh, but we made a commitment to support the locals and we, we hire all local kids. We only talk to locals that want to open up and become independent mm -hmm. operators and start their own business. So it's kind of, yeah. it's kind of fun. Yeah, they, and it's great. Yeah, and it's great for tourists too because they know the right. area, they can tell them what restaurants, what everything, what golf courses. And, and so we almost become uh, diplomats uh, for, for the community uh -huh. because you know, we will have people ask us what's a difficult golf course or what's an easy golf course. Right. And that. So we tell them, if you go there, you better bring 30 golf balls with uh -huh. you because you're going to lose 28 yeah. of them. So or rather if it's an easy golf right. course. So. No, that's great. That's perfect for our community. Mm -hmm. What a great business to have. Mm -hmm. um, now, I want to talk to you a little bit about, I see you everywhere. I see you at football games. I see you at events. Mm -hmm. What all can you do? What oh, all God. events do you do? We do, uh, our biggest thing, we do a lot of sporting events. We're, uh -huh. In fact, people out in Matthews and the Charlotte area, they do the Bobcats games, the professional. Oh, okay. They do the Carolina Panthers games. We do the NC State basketball games at mm -hmm. RBC Center. We do the Hurricanes professional sports, and then I don't, a ton of high school sports right. and Pee Wee sports and this and that. So, uh, and we do a lot of the state tournaments too, okay. uh, which is again gives us more exposure to every section of the right. of the state here in North Carolina. And do you do weddings? As weddings, well? yes. I forgot about weddings. Weddings is a big part of our business. We just uh, did one last last Friday night at the Isles Restaurant at Ocean Isle Beach, mm -hmm. and that was fun. And we have a little 
what we call an infusion list. We drizzle a little bit of either coconut rum on the mango. Oh, okay. uh, so we have a whole, mm, yeah, we have a whole yeah. list. It's on, it's on our website, so that's slash dot com. Okay. <laughs> so, and, uh, and we do a lot of birthday parties still okay, for the children. Okay, so they can just call you mm -hmm. and reserve you for uh -huh. their party. Yep. And if they go to our website too, let's say it's somebody in the Raleigh area, mm -hmm. uh, they can call Raleigh Direct by getting through our website to, okay. to them. So they don't that's have to always call yet. us. Yeah, yeah, everybody's linked to our website. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone wanted to come by the actual main, this was the first original store. This is so it. Uh -huh. Where are we located now, uh -huh. and what's the number they can call okay. you? We're at 6848 Beach Drive, mm -hmm. and that's Ocean Isle Beach. Uh, we're right next to probably a, a landmark here, which is Big Nell's uh, restaurant next door to us, mm -hmm. and we're directly opposite Sherwin Williams Paint. So, and then uh, that's we store all our Italian ice here. Probably usually in stock have about anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 buckets my of gracious. ice at a time. So, oh my goodness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, that's great. Well, thank you so much, and we look forward to seeing where you guys go in the future, and I'm sure everyone's going to want to come out or see you on the beach. Oh, I so hope so. You. I hope so. They'll, they'll enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun treat. It's a whimsical business. It's a hard business, but it's whimsical and fun. <laughs> well, thank great. you very well, much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're here at Bubbles and Bows, a pet salon in Ocean Isle Beach. I'm with the owner, Christy Kilt, and we want to know all about this business. It's a very unique business, and we're excited to hear about it. So first off, can you tell us, how did you get started, and why did you decide to work with pets? Well, as a child, I've always loved animals, and I knew that one day I was going to work with animals in some capacity. So, um, out of high school, I started researching um, various jobs that um, I could, one, be my own boss, and two, work with animals. So, um, through my research, I came across a school called Nan Hall Grooming School, where it teaches you how to open a pet salon, um, how to run it, the, the business part of it, and um, not only how to groom pets, but how to be a competition groomer. Okay, so you are a competition groomer. I am. Yes. Okay, so you're probably one of the best ones around. Mm -hmm. I'd like to say yeah. so. <laughs> yeah. Well, tell us, tell us a little bit about your day to day. I know it probably ranges and yes. and changes a lot. But what does a typical day look like for you? A typical day um, starts where we, our dogs come in in groups. And the first group comes in, and the girls and I, um, we start off by bathing, clipping nails, blow drying, and then um, doing the haircut. And after that, um, we call the owners, and they come and pick the pet up. Then okay. the next group comes in, okay. and it just rotates around until the end of the day. Okay. Now, why, why in groups? Is there a reason that you do it in groups and not individually? Yes. Um, I believe that a pet is, his comfort zone is his home. Mm -hmm. Although we have a lot of pets that come here and um, they're used to us and they know us, right. their number one place they want to be is at home on the couch mm -hmm. with their owners. So mm -hmm. I feel that if we get, get the pet in, let them have their pet spa day, mm -hmm. and within two to three hours go home, that's less stressful on the pet than him being there all day long. Right. And it just turns out to be a, a easier thing for okay it takes him out of his comfort zone a little bit exactly okay yeah. now now what all do you offer here you you bathe and mm -hmm. haircut of course now is there any other services that you offer for the pets? yes we do teeth brushing um, toenail painting hair coloring um, we do massages in the bathtub for them oh my goodness. for those that are a little stressed out <laughs> so we make them you know calm and yeah. relaxed and um, also do hand stripping, which is a uh, specialized technique that not a lot of groomers know how to do. And what is that? That is um, where you get a natural show coat. Instead of shaving the dog on his back, mm -hmm. you strip the soft undercoat uh, oh, out okay. of it and leave the guard hairs, which also aids in shedding. So he's not shedding oh. quite as much. We also do a furminator, which aids in the the shedding, keeping out all the hair from falling out on your floor. And, right. Well, those yeah. are some great services here. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people like to get those. Oh, yeah. Well, that's great. Now, you said something about hair coloring. What, yeah. <laughs> what all is that? What have you seen people ask for? Um, I had a lady ask for her white poodle to be hot pink for a party. Oh, my and, goodness. And um, then we have a, a Maltese that comes in and gets pink tips on the ears and um, just various colors uh -huh. that just uh, fun party colors for any special events that oh my gosh, make so their fun. dogs stand out and look special. Oh, that's great. Now, you do a lot of different types of dogs. What can you do any type of dog, little, big? What yes. Are, okay. Um, 
this is another thing that we were trained in the um, at Nan Hall Grooming School was the uh, AKC breed standards and um, cuts for all the breeds. Okay. And um, we do uh, hand scissoring for Bichons, um, hand stripping for the Terriers, um, Cocker Spaniel cuts. Um, all types of, all the cuts you would see at the Westminster Dog Show, where you see them out being paraded for right. in front of the judges, those haircuts, I could do every one of those. That's what okay. we were trying to do. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. So anyone can come in with a dog and you'd be able to... to Absolutely. Great. Yeah. Now, you said something about some shows, and I saw that you did had some awards. Is yes. that right? Right. Well, now, what, what, what did it all you get? Every year, the National Dog Groomer Association puts on... Um, trade shows and seminars all over the world, uh, Europe, the United States, everywhere. And anytime they have one in North Carolina, I try to attend it. And um, th those trade shows um, and seminars um, teach you all the new things that are in the, coming up in the pet industry. Mm -hmm. And um, in conjunction to that, they have um, grooming competitions. And um, I always try to attend at least one competition uh, when I go. And um, so far, I have placed every year that I have oh, competed. That says a lot right there. Yeah, that's really fun. Yeah, yeah, that's exciting. And then you also get to continue your education in the industry. Exactly, exactly. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. And we're excited to go and look around right now and take yeah. a look at some of the pets you have grooming sure. right now. Yeah. So we're here with Dolly, and she had just got her bath. So can you tell us a little bit about the products you use um, when you do give them a bath? Um, we use a product called Show Season, which is 99.9% .9 all natural. Um, in other words, it doesn't have the ingredients in it that might irritate their skin or mm -hmm. cause allergies. Um, we have a different shampoo for each dog. Oh, okay. If he has a white coat, we have a shampoo that's going to bring out that white. Um, if he has dry, itchy skin, we use oatmeal. Um, so what we do is we assess the skin situation on the dog and use the shampoo that suits each dog. Okay. Now, if an owner really likes that shampoo, is there a way that they can buy it mm -hmm. here? We sell this show season out front in our little um, area. Oh, okay. Yep. Great. Now, also, you've been, been here for so long that I'm sure you see some of the same dogs. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure you kind of started a special relationship with Definitely. them. Definitely. How, how is that? How is that working with you guys? We have um, some pets that come in every two weeks up to every six weeks. So we see these dogs a whole lot mm -hmm. um, throughout their life. And you do tend to um, get a bond with each one of right. them. Um, they get excited when they see you. and. Um, Unfortunately, when some of the older dogs do pass, it it does it touches all of us because right. we do become attached to them. Now, if someone wanted to bring their pet in, mm -hmm. where would they bring them and how can they get in contact with you? We're located at 6886 Beach Drive on Highway 179, and um, our number is 910-575-6593. Great. Well, thank you so much for letting us come out and meet some of your precious little customers and, and really get to see what you do every day. Well, thank you. We're here at Petroni's Pizza I'm with John Patron, and we are in Holden Beach. Thanks so much for letting us come out here. We're really excited to see how you run this business and what you guys have to offer. So first off, tell us a little bit about why you decided to open a pizza shop and why here in Brunswick County. Well, we picked Brunswick County because we've been coming to the vacation spot um, ever since the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, we originally moved to Apex in 96, mm -hmm. and we found ourselves traveling to the beach more and more. Um, my parents had a plan to move to the beach after kids got out of college, or kids went to, went to college, rather. Um, so we ended up coming down the beach after I graduated Appalachian State in 07. Um, I find myself down here as well. Um, my dad and I got together, and uh, we determined we wanted to open up another business adventure. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went into the pizza business once again. And it's uh, it's been a joy ever since. Good. Now this you, you this is a family business. That's right. 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 Now where are y'all originally from? We're originally from Bay Ridge, Brooklyn. Okay. Um, we were all born and raised there. That's why our slogan is "Born in Brooklyn." It's a true statement for all of us. Um, we inevitably wanted to crawl back to the beach. Yeah. Well, that's great. Well, we're glad that you're here because you have some great pizza. Now, can you tell us a little bit about your day-to-day -day schedule? How do you you come in, and then what do you do all day to keep this business running? 
what do I do all day mm -hmm. and all night, you mean? <laughs> right, um, right. Well, we usually get here about 9, 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, depending on how busy we are. Uh, obviously, during the summertime, it's a long, long day. Um, we're here at 9. We don't leave till about 11 o'clock. Oh, wow. And uh, it's every day. So um, we, we run at a pretty high pace during the summertime. Uh, but it's all worth it for us because this is ours. Um, we can call it our own. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny how much harder you'll work when it's when it's yours right. versus someone else's. Uh, so we work a high um, a high intensity schedule. Um, it, it takes a lot, but um, it's also very rewarding at the end. So we don't mind doing it at all. Good. Well, that's great. Now tell us about what you have to offer. Obviously, pizza. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about your pizza and then the other dishes you offer as well? Well, we have a hand-tossed pizza. Um, we have a large and a small variety. Um, we press it out by hand. We make the dough by hand. Uh, we make our sauce by hand. Uh, well, with an electric mixer, but mm -hmm. we call it by hand. Um, so we crush our own tomatoes, make our own sauce, wow. make our own dough. Um, we do as much by hand as, as we possibly can and still keep up with the volume that we do in the summertime. Um, so um, we obviously make the dough, let it rise. Uh, we, we press it out ourselves, you know, no machines, no rollers. Wow. Uh, we hand toss it. Uh, you'll occasionally see us throwing it up in the air once or twice. Um, then we make the pizza and we bake it in a stone oven for about eight minutes. Yeah. Yep. Now, do you have any toppings or are they just the kind of the usual? Yeah, we have a, a, a large variety of toppings. We have about 40 toppings on our oh, menu. Okay. Um, most people stick to our, our suggested varieties, like a supreme pizza. Mm -hmm. It's got your pepperoni, your sausage, your green pepper, mushrooms and onions. Um, a meat lovers is very popular. Um, but gaining steam is the Papa's pizza pie made mm -hmm. with our homemade meatballs. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We'll see which one takes the cake. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Now you also offer some other dishes. Can you tell us a little bit about those? Sure. We have um, we have all kinds of appetizers um, from your mozzarella sticks, uh, jalapeno poppers, onion rings, um, a very nice antipasta platter, uh, which has a variety of uh, sliced meats and um, fresh cheese and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, we have a great variety of wings, um, hot, mild, barbecue, or sea salt. The mild, by far, is, it, is the favorite. Um, mm -hmm. We cook them from fresh. Um, you know, we don't batter them. We cook them from fresh. Um, we, have a, we have a manicotti pasta and a baked ziti. Um, it's wow. our version of baked ziti. It's probably nothing like you've ever had before. It's okay. got nice melted mozzarella right on top. You can add meatballs to it, which are great. Um, we have a, a huge variety, or not a huge variety, but a huge salad. Mm -hmm. um, we have a house salad, a Caesar salad, okay. um, chicken Caesar salad, Yum. and a tomato cucumber red onion salad with our homemade Italian dressing. Uh, so we have, a, we have a good bit to offer for a mm -hmm. pizza shop. So. Right, that sounds delicious. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to talk about my favorite part, the desserts. I saw you have cannolis. Is that we, right? We have cannolis. Um, we bring them in from, from up north, um, oh, okay. and we assemble them here. They come the shell and the cream. Um, we tried to make our own, but we just can't make them as good as they make them. So, mm -hmm. so we go ahead and let the other guys do it, the professionals. And um, but they're really good. They're really good. It's a sweet ricotta cream mm -hmm. um, made with um, with chocolate chips inside and a lot of sugar and all the other good stuff. Uh, we have a New York style cheesecake, oh, okay. and um, we have what are called zeppelis. Mm -hmm. Zeppelis. Nope. What are those? It's our variety. Uh, there's there's you know there's a traditional way of making them. The way we we make them is we take our pizza dough. Um, we roll them up and we lightly fry them and we toss them with powdered sugar or cinnamon. Oh, yep. yeah. Some people call them redneck donuts. Um, <laughs> that might be a better term it's kinda like a little, here. It's kind of like a funnel cake kind of deal. Oh, okay. Um, but it's great. People have really liked them. Oh, great. Well, that sounds delicious. Now, um, can you tell our viewers where you're located and your hours and your phone number just in case they have any questions or obviously when they want to come at, come out here and, sure, and sure. try your... Well, we're located at 2625 Holden Beach Road. Uh, in Supply, just outside of Holden Beach, about, about two miles from uh, Holden Beach itself. Um, we're just past the Sitco station on Seashore Road, if you know where that is. Um, phone number is 910-842-7900. Do you have a website? We sure do. Uh, you can go to www.patronispizza.com. We, uh, we have our menu online as well. Um, we also have... Uh, a good bit of pictures of some of our customers enjoying our food. Perfect.
Well, thanks so much. And we're, we had a great time coming out here. We're excited to look around and see some more. But thanks for letting us come out. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in to this month's episode of Brunswick Biz. If you have a business you'd like to see on our show, give us a call at 755-1770. Be sure to join us next time when we connect Brunswick County one business at a time.